Okay, today I'm going to be looking at pressure volume graphs and how these relate to thermodynamic processes. So it's something you see quite a lot is that we might look at a process and on a pressure volume graph. So let's just draw a graph for now. So pressure and volume, so we have pressure here and volume here, they're both what are called state variables. And they define like the condition of a physical system. You can imagine that you have a gas in a piston. I like to always think about this. And the gas in the piston here, it has a certain pressure, a certain volume, certain temperature. All these things tell us what the state is. And then on a pressure volume graph, we look at if we're starting at a particular state here and we're going to get through a series of changes, get to the state down here. What does that process look like? And there are four different types of process that we, we describe, and I'm going to go through them all today. So the first I'll talk about is called an isothermal process. So isothermal. And an isothermal process is a process that happens at a constant temperature. So we might start at a pressure and volume here and we end up at a pressure and volume here and they tend to look like this they're kind of curved and this will all be at the same temperature a certain temperature say t1 and there might be other th we call these lines actually isotherms and there might be a different isotherm down here at a different temperature t2 and that's just that's the kind of path we get so what i'm saying here is that we start out at the first pressure and volume and a series of changes take place and you the system follows this path to a different pressure and volume but along this curve it remains at the same temperature it's isothermal so that's what an isothermal change is now there's also another kind the next kind of change is called adiabatic Now, an adiabatic change is one where there is no heat transfer to or from the system. Now, these also are curves, but they tend to be a bit steeper. So the easiest way to draw this, actually, is to draw two isotherms first. So I'm going to draw this can be one isotherm and this can be another. OK, so imagine these are two isotherms. That's a T1. This is a T2. Now, an adiabatic process, the temperature doesn't remain constant. So we start at this temperature here and end up at a different temperature down here. And it looks something like this. OK, and so that would be an adiabatic change. Now, this will become important when we look at um, the Carnot cycle, which is like a heat engine. But for now, just remember adiabatic, there is no heat transfer to or from the system. And it gets you to curve on a pressure volume graph. So the next one, and the next two, they're, they're kind of easier to remember. So like pressure and volume is isochoric, which is a constant volume. So isochoric. Now a constant volume on this graph is simply a straight line like this. So there's no change in volume. Um, either direction doesn't make a difference, but this is an isochoric change. So if we go back to our piston, this would not change. In these two processes, the volume has changed. We've gone from one volume to a different one, one volume to a different one. So this would, the piston would move. But an isochoric change is the only one where that doesn't happen. Now the last change is an isobaric change. Iso and that is a constant pressure so there we actually have a line horizontally so remember we have pressure here volume here so that's an isobaric change now the reason that it's useful to draw these on pressure volume graphs is that it turns out that for these graphs 
the area under the graph is the work done. So if I look at this graph, this area is the work done in that process. This area is the work done in this process. For the isochoric, there is no change in volume, so there's no area under this graph, so the work done is zero. And isobaric, it's the area under here is the work done. Now I'll go into the reason exactly why that is in a, in a later um, tutorial. But for now, here's just a quick overview of the, the four different types of thermodynamic process and um, how we draw them on a pressure volume graph. And as always, if you want to request any different tutorials, then do so in the comments or contact me any other way. And um, check on my channel for different videos. This should be in like a playlist with lots of different stuff in it.